time now for our reading for the week. It's excitement back to back to back. You know how we do it. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen. Should I say the one who owns the heavyweight title when it comes to literature or writing? Oh, but it's a she. Ah. Sonia Ibrahim is in the building. And she's going to be sharing with us snippets of her story, Baby Joe. Sonia, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Right. Good to have you in the studio. How are you feeling? Um, I'm okay. I'm excited. <laughs> right. No butterflies? Well, a little. A little. <laughs> yes. But I'm sure they'll flutter away shortly. They'll fly away. It, it, it will. <laughs> I know you love uh, Trigmatic's uh, music. How, what's the vibe? Why do you like Trigmatic? Uh, for me, um, when I listen to songs, um, I always go for the lyrics. Right. It has to be meaningful and um, inspiring for me. So I don't, you don't really get me listening to all those boom, boom, shake, boom, boom, those things now. Yeah. With his songs, there is, he's always telling a story. Right. He's always giving some form of inspiration and motivation, right. which I relate to, and that's why I like him. So I'm supposing you'd also <laughs> like Manifest then? Yes. Right. I'm not a, a rap fan, but right. he's good. Yes, I don't want to mention some names, but he's he's very good. Like, I will listen to his style. Right. But, yeah. Someone else we're going to bring on the show uh, sometime <laughs> soon. But Baby Joe, the story, how did it happen? How long ago did you hand the story? I think this was, um, it happened in class. I remember uh, when I was going to school at the Creative Writing Academy. Right. And um, the lecturer said uh, we should take like 30 minutes to create um, a dialogue and baby Joe came from a dialogue I created in class right so my she she liked my dialogue she said it was very interesting right so she asked me to build a story on the dialogue mm. and I didn't have anything in mind it just came out and then yeah <laughs> this is the result yes <laughs> Well, let's find out what exactly Baby Joe is about. Is it a baby? Is it something else? We'll find out. Sonia Ibrahim on Arts Africa with Baby Joe. Take it away. Okay. In a world where religion and superstitions are dominant, one can only hope for truth and light in either way. It is almost midnight. Kwesi is sitting in the living room watching television. His feet are resting on the coffee table as he drinks a cold bottle of beer. His dog, Pinto, is lying next to his chair. Suddenly, he hears the slamming of the windows and some footsteps in the kitchen. He sits upright, places the beer on the table, grabs the remote and reduces the volume, volume of the television. He stands upright and turns towards the kitchen. He can't see anything or anyone, so he calls out to his wife. Abina, Abina, is that you? No answer. Roof, roof, roof. Pinto won't stop barking. Kwesi calls out again, louder than before. Abina! Abina! Abina walks into the living room with a frown, nightdress stained with breast milk. The net covering her hair has shifted to the side. Kwesi, do you want to wake the baby? Kwesi observes her bare feet. Is that how you should speak to your husband? I'm sorry. Please keep your voice down. I don't want to wake the baby. Okay, I heard footsteps in the kitchen. Was it you? It wasn't me. Can I go back to bed or do you want to ask something else? No, it's okay. You can go back to bed. Good night. Abina goes to the table, collects the empty bottle of beer he placed on, on it and walks away without saying good night. Kwesi returns to his chair, sits down and continues watching television. Minutes later, Abina runs hysterically into the living room. What's the matter? Kwesi asks. What is wrong? He's gone. I can't find him. He's gone. Who is gone? She starts crying. Woman, will you answer me? Who can't you find? The baby, our son, Joe is gone. What do you mean he's gone? Was he not sleeping with you in the room? Or are you saying he magically learned how to walk at two months old and left this house on his own? Abina starts wailing. She throws her hands over her head. I don't know. I really don't know. He was sleeping when I came to you, but when I got back to the room, he was nowhere to be found. I don't know, Kwesi. I just don't know. Kwesi runs to the room to look for their son, while Abina searches all the rooms. Meanwhile, Pinto is in the living room staring at the window. He begins to bark. Kwesi and Abina run to the living room to see what he's backing at. Pinto, do you see anything? 
What is it, boy? Show me. Kwesi tries to get a reaction from Pinto, but Pinto just sits there, backing. Abina goes closer to the window and notices some footsteps heading under the mango tree in the compound. She quietly moves closer to Kwesi in fear. Kwesi, someone is walking outside. I can see footsteps. Kwesi pushes her out of his way and rushes to the window. He looks everywhere, hoping to find someone. Then he notices a white blanket. He continues searching for the intruder, but it's dark. He can't really see anything. Meanwhile, Abina is hiding behind him. Abina, can you see baby Joe? Do you see anything? Kwesi, our baby is floating. He is in the air and no one is holding him. He holds Abina very tight and shouts, Blood of Jesus! The spirits have come for our son. Save him! This time, Abina is the only one, isn't the only one afraid. Baby Joe, wrapped in a white blanket, is floating in the air. Suddenly, they see him moving down. When he reaches the grass, Baby Joe begins to cry. Abina tries to go to Baby Joe. Kwesi stops her. Wait, the spirit is still here. Don't go out just yet. Finally, they see the shadow walking away from the baby. When the shadow disappears, Abina pushes Kwesi aside and dashes towards Baby Joe. She picks him up, hugs him and plants kisses all over his face. With tears rolling down her cheeks, she whispers to him, Oh, my poor baby. You are safe now. I won't let you out of my sight ever again. Kwesi looks left and right to make sure it is safe. Then he takes Abina in his arms. Abina holds baby Joe to her chest, afraid to let him go. Kwesi slowly leads his wife inside the house. He quickly locks the door and takes her to the room. Pinto follows them to the room and lays at the foot of the bed. Abina, still holding onto baby Joe, climbs into bed. Kwesi looks at her, still in, still in fear. He lays beside her. Don't worry, my dear. Our son is safe now. Tomorrow we shall take him to the priest. For the, but for now, let us try and get some rest. The end. Very, very interesting story right there. Baby Joe by Sonia Ibrahim. Do you love babies? I love babies. I, I can tell. <laughs> right from the, I could tell there was an affinity for, and on the spur of the moment, if you were asked to write and you had to write about a baby, I could feel it in there. But also, yeah. you know, the, the, the dimensions of spirituality and maybe even superstition and all of that. That's a bit of a creepy story. It's a I know. <laughs> I know. You know, the point where the baby is being held, but it's just a shadow. You can't even, I'm like, whoa, what's going to happen? <laughs> What what made you write a story like this? Apart from the classroom experience and all of that, yeah. Why, why this? Okay, um, for me, uh, you know, we live in a world where a lot of people have their own beliefs um, when it comes to spirit spiritual things. Some people believe, like I'm a Christian. Some people are. Uh, you know, belief in uh, superstition. Some believe in astrologies. They have their own beliefs. You right, know, some even some right. are atheists. They don't believe in anything. They believe they just appear on, on this earth. Right. You understand? So I, I'm very. Even though I'm a Christian, I believe in a, <clears throat> I believe in a lot of um, spiritual things that mm. happens. So when I was writing that, I have two kids of my own. Right. So I try to put myself in the story that right. okay. You know, sometimes certain things happens and then... You can't uh, even explain it. You can't explain it. So right. I, I try to imagine myself, okay, what if I'm there one day and my baby just disappear? Is it going to be uh, some ghost that, you know, took the baby? Mm. Is it really... Is, are superstitions really real? Because right. I also watch a lot of movies that, you know, they have all these things like vampires and, and demons and I stay stuff. I <laughs> Yes. So, I mean, I, I try to understand okay we all have our beliefs so right. could it be this could right. it be that right yeah right. do you have a dog or dog no funny enough i'm afraid of dogs <laughs> <laughs> right but you were writing about one so yeah. right before we take leave of our sonia what would you say is the lesson to be learned from this very briefly um i think the lesson in here is that i i want everyone to Stay true to what they believe in, no matter what it is. Even if it's a fetish priest, you know, believe in that. If you right. have your, for me, I say faith. Um, faith is something strong. Mm. It's more of a mental thing. So if you believe in something, no matter what it is, it can be good or bad. But if you truly believe in it, stick to it. If you decide to believe it, stick to it. It's like yeah. the Bible will always also say about God. He doesn't like us to be lukewarm. If you'll be hot, be hot. If you'll be cold, be cold. But 
the lukewarm, the tepid type, he does not like. <laughs> not even the gods like that. Thank you very much, Sonia Ibrahim, Thank for joining us this afternoon with <laughs> Baby Joe. Do have a fun day. Thank you.